Hello, everyone. Okay. It's here. What have I been warning about, about this, this rally attempt the entire time? Two things missing that I need, or three things, really, that I need to see to even trust any bottom in the market. I have never seen a rally off, the, off of any low in such a short period of time where I've received so many long signals, have received so many breadth thrust and new high signals, and have received so many pocket pivot point signals that were also follow through days each and every session since the October lows in such a small period of time. At the same time, I have also never seen a bottom happen without the VIX spiking to over 40. 34 is not high enough. The blue line is where I need to see it. I have also, if that doesn't happen, have never seen a bottom where retail, passive, passive retail, your 401k, your IRA, mom and pop, grandma, grandpa investors don't panic sell. I have also never seen a bottom where, unless it's 1974 or 1994, leading to the 1995 market, where you bottom with the Fed raising interest rates. Normally, the market's in a free fall. They start cutting rates as the market's falling. Eventually, the market finds a bottom. Only two times has it not happened. 1974 and 1994. 1994 was a weird case. 1974, it took the market eight years of chopping around until we went higher again. One thing that I've constantly warned about is the lack of grade A signals this entire uptrend. I have not received any grade A signals. There have been multiple signals that have come close, like on the spec side, DCFC, right here. There have been other signals that have come close before earnings, like FSLR, which, by the way, look at it. Does it look like it's in serious problems today? AXON, WFRD. But even these signals, they're not grade A. I mean, they're close. They're about as close as you can get right now. But none of these have been grade A. I've received zero grade A signals from this October lows while receiving the most grade B signals ever. No indication of a bottom, no passive retail panic, no VIX over 40, no Fed pivot. So all I've had to go with is the follow through days, the pocket pivot point signals, the mere fact that we continue to trend higher and all of these bread thrust new high signals and all these grade B signals. But I can't size into a market unless I have a clear sign of a bottom via the VIX, retail panic selling, or a Fed pivot. If I don't have any of those three, unless I get a grade A signal, I cannot and will not increase size to a level where I'm uncomfortable with the risk in any name. So even though DKS, FSLR, WFRD, AXON, and maybe even DCFC have all been gr great since they're near grade A signals, there is no way I can increase size without evidence after such a long bear market that we've actually bottomed. So I've told everybody, even though I'm not getting any grade A signals, I cannot be bearish due to all the bread thrust and new highs thrust and all the grade B signals. I cannot be. However, all I need to have happen to change that is the black swan event to come. Almost everybody is worried about war of Ukraine and Russia. Oh, that's the, that's the one that we have to worry about, right? You know, but by the way, France's index is near new highs. So obviously, you know, war is never a problem. And anytime the United States has been involved with a war, it's been bullish for the stock market. So war is bullish because it lets the war machine get pumping. And once the war machine gets pumping, industry, industry gets pumping. And that's actually bullish 
for the stock market, especially in a world where it's the top one, 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 one percent and everyone else. So the war machine is extremely happy with war and it's great for the market. The problem I've been wondering and worried about watching the savings rate of the entire country plummet while credit card debt skyrockets, homelessness becoming a huge problem across the world, and Walmart leaving Portland due to crime, when I put all of this together, I have to let you all know the Black Swan event that I'm personally worried about is the Black Swan event that would show up in the credit markets or the banking system. The first shoe to drop, FTX, has spread to SI. And then today, SIVB came out. Share offering, total equity loss write-off. I think that this is just the beginning. This is the black swan that I've been quote, quote, worried about. This is also why I told you that despite all these long signals, I said it yesterday, I can't be more than 50% invested if I'm even 25% invested because of how small I am, it would be a miracle. It's the most stocks I've ever, 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 ever held long and the lowest amount of capital allocation I've ever, ever, ever had with these long positions in my entire 20 plus career of trading. I have never been long so many stocks with such small size to where it would be, I thought I was around, I'd say 40% invested. I checked out my cash allocation last night. I am over 75% cash heading into today. After today, I assume, and I'll know very shortly, that I'm probably around 85% cash. So during this entire uptrend, I have never gotten more than 30% invested on the long side. Did I miss out on some runners like DKS that still look fine, FSLR that still look fine, AXON that still look fine, WFRD that still look fine? Sure. But small price to pay for what we're seeing out there now. So following today's session, the black swan is here. I have no idea how systematic it is, but I guarantee you, as the quarters go, the, the interest rate hike level, the FOMC um, Fed dot plot has increased. There are now 6 to 6.25% chances. Hold on, I'm going to actually bring up the website. Wow. Okay. So they're even higher now. So I'm looking at the July, 2023 fed watch tool. It's basically the target rate probabilities for the fed in July of 2023. Just to let you guys know, there wasn't even a 5.7, 5.75% to a six here just a couple of months ago. There's now a 20% chance that they're going to hike up to 5.75 to 6% by July. But not only that, there is now a new column, the 6 to 6.25 column, 2.5% for July, September 2.5%, which is higher than it was just recently, 1.1%, 6.25 to 6.5 in November. 
the November just a couple of months ago not only did not have a 6 to 6.25, it didn't have a 6.25 to 6.5. So the Fed, if they continue to hike rates and we continue to see this horrible news come out of the banks, there is no way SPY is going to hold on. So we're looking really rough here. We're looking really rough. We've just had two major distribution days in three days on the SPY. We're cracking the 50 and the 200. We're cracking the, oh, man, wow, on the IWM. This because of banks. Look at that, and look at the volume. Guys, yeah, this today changes everything. That small bullish thesis that I had to have, and it would be irresponsible on my end to ignore all the grade B signals, to ignore the bread thrust, to ignore the new highs, because every single time that this has happened, it's been after a market bottom. The only difference this time around was no confirmation via the Fed, VIX, or panic selling via the retail crowd. So all of that was not confirmed. But it would have been a 100% irresponsible for me to have stayed 100% cash, ignore all of these signals, and then to see us just keep ripping to new highs. Now, with all that being said, the one thing that I'm proud of myself for not doing is FOMOing into the long-term accounts. After today's session, SPY 370, you know, we get down to SPY 370, I'll buy a little bit for the long-term portfolios. But after today, fingers crossed, I can get my SPY 350 close. I hope I can. I need to. I want to. I must get it. SPY 350, we see a close below SPY 350. 50% 50 of all of my long-term portfolios and retirement accounts get pushed into SPY or SPXL. I think I'm done with um, trading stocks in the long-term accounts, especially in a non-QE market. Um, but once things change, sure. Sure, things will go back to the way that they were, like the Teslas, Apples, Amazons, whatever. But for now, I'm just going to stick to SPY and SPXL. But I'm going to hope and pray and wish and do all that superstitious bullshit that I can get my SPY 350 close. We'll see if I can't get it. Now, another thing I want to discuss, by the way, there are zero new end-of-day quality long signals. That's why we're going to focus on the SPY. That tickets indicator just saved us from getting long the SPY above the 50. That tickets indicator didn't only save us on this move above the 50 on the SPY, but it saved us on this move above the 50 on the SPY. And now that would have been another loser. And I'll show you how it did. All right, everybody, we're going to go through my SPY day trading layout. First off, we're going to start on the highest time frame that I look at for this indicator weekly time frame. As the saying goes, with this indicator, price should not be above the 50 SMA if this indicator is below the zero line. You will see, got above the 50 SMA, back below. Above the 50 SMA, back below. So first off, we're not properly lined up on the weekly for the daily time frame to be in effect. For the daily time frame to be in effect with this indicator, the highest time frame weekly has to be in alignment. So to be bullish on the SPY on a daily time frame, I need this indicator on a weekly time frame to be above zero. Is it above zero? No. Okay. So now we know that for a fact, right? So now we're going to go to the daily time frame. We're going to use the one-year, one-day chart. Is this indicator above the zero line? Yes. So as the saying goes, Price should not be below the 50 SMA if this indicator is above the zero line. And you can get long this indicator every single time it crosses the 50 SMA. If, if the weekly is in alignment, if the weekly and the daily are not in alignment to trust any 50 SMA crosses on the daily, we need to see the lower time frame confirm. So let's now. Go to the hourly time frame and see how that looks. Oh, we've been below the zero line ever since February 15th. February 16th open, we officially really crossed the zero line and we have not reclaimed it since. So 
if the highest time frame is below the zero line and the lowest time frame is below the zero line, any daily signal is not true. That's why you didn't see us at big wave trading go long above the 50 SMA. On the same token, on this lower time frame, we can even use this indicator anytime price is above the 50 and the indicator is below zero, price should not be above the 50. Gets above the 50, and then even more important, gets above the 200 with this indicator below zero. As soon as it loses the 200, don't you wish you would have gone short the SPY obeying this tickets indicator that we have? Sure did work out nicely, didn't it? But more importantly, price is above the 50, Tickets indicator is below the zero line, and we roll. Now, if we look at the SPXS, you can trade this the same way as an inverse. On a one hour, the tickets indicator gets above zero here. Price gets below the 50 here. Tickets indicator is above zero. You get long at 18. Ride this trend up. Once again, price is below the 50. Tickets indicator is above zero. You can get long on the reclaim of the 50, risking to this low. And we got a green arrow here, which is our Fibonacci reversal signal. So that confirms that move here. And yes, you would have had to deal with this dip, but it never violated this low. And once again, you got a nice little $1 move on SPXS on a day that the market was bloody red. So with all of that out of the way, I remain heavy cash. I will continue to focus intraday, and I got to admit, today was a shit show on my end because out the gate, I went long UNCY over two, took profits as it came back and hit my trailing um, profit stop. But if anybody followed me over two, you got a 3.6% gain in minutes, and then it went even further but it would have ran the final sell stop if you used the logical rational one. I keep using break even stops right now. So you and see why was a winner. But once again, I am once again long another stock. First off, right here, buy stop 775. That's why I wanted to get long. I set my buy stop at 775. I believe it was right here for the market open. And unfortunately, I didn't trade it pre market and I missed that entire 15% move. But the same thing happened with OCEA that happened to me with UNCY on its day one. I did a dip and rip, got long above the high of the day into a halt. In hot markets, these things just keep going, guys. And I just bank and we bank, bank, bank because I give you all my dip and rip ideas before the market opens. And then on this green arrow, it shows you whenever I gave it to everyone. Right here, 775, I told everybody. Right here, I knew I was screwed, and I told everybody, dip and rip, OCEA. The problem is, OCEA did not gap up. Second time in a row. I've been long now two stocks exactly how I want to be long. Should be rolling in the money. And instead, fail. UNCY did it. OCEA did it. This does not happen at all in the hot market. So I was actually red today until I did something on ASAN, which is outside of anything that I do. I identified 21 as a key support level, and I got long ASAN posted like I do every single time I enter and exit the trade, posted the screenshot proving that I got long ASAN, and this never happens to me, guys. Never, ever, ever, ever. Right here is when I decided I want to get long if it hits 21. Look at what the low of the day is. 2098. I got long at 21, and when it got to this 200 SMA at 2150, I took my profits. I posted the trade in the chat room. I finished the day green, and that's a miracle because this is outside of my normal playbook, but it worked perfectly. I'm not going to continue to keep doing it, but it still worked. With that being said, what is session until things change? Intraday focus only, and I am so small even intraday. It's just stupid. It's stupid how small I am. 
on all time frames. That's going to continue until the market changes.